Hey name tags and welcome back. This is Ash from Heal My PC 99. Today I've got a Sony Vio laptop. The laptop is overheating. The fan is spinning quite loud and over time laptops do get like that and they need to be cleaned. So today I'm going to show you how to disassemble this laptop and how to clean the fan and clean any dust and also how to apply some new thermal paste. Stay tuned. Warning, this repair may cause your laptop to supercharge and possibly create the first true AI, which may eventually take over the world in the final showdown of man vs machine. Do at your own risk or consult a professional, but not this guy. Protect yourself and your device by using an anti-static wrist bracelet. Find a clutter-free non-conductive surface to work on. Switch off the laptop, unplug the charger, remove the battery, press and hold the power button for 15 seconds or more to discharge any static residue. I use a blank piece of paper and some cello tape to mark or draw the location of the screws. You could also use a small compartmentalized labeled screw box. This makes reassembly much faster and easier as the screws are of different sizes. For this laptop model, if you see a screw, you need to remove it. Work in order. I would advise to remove the outer screws first and work towards the center. You will see screw sizes such as M2.5 by 6 on the laptop itself. As you remove screws of the same size and a similar location, just mark the reference and number of screws and tape them down so they don't get lost. Be patient and methodical. Trust me, this will make reassembly a breeze later as it can be very confusing for inexperienced tech. My first laptop took over 2 hours to disassemble and over 3 hours to put back, including leftover screws, aka pocket screws. Noob alert! Little rant coming up while the whole disassembly plays in the background. I hate laptops with a passion. Not directly accusing Sony here, but all laptops. They are poorly designed for cooling, with many models having the air vents right on the bottom making it almost impossible to safely operate within reasonable CPU and motherboard temperature when placed on fabric surfaces such as carpets, mattresses and sofas, and let's not forget one's own lap. Ironic, isn't it? They break easily and inevitably worsen in performance faster than other computer devices and are quite costly for the consumer to get repaired. As for the repair technician, it is a pain up the wazoo to access parts for diagnosis and repair and we can actually easily do extra damage during the whole operation. Above all, we cannot charge adequately since laptops are too cheap nowadays and most customers would prefer buying another one than repairing. There are some exceptions, possibly Macs and higher end laptops which have excellent warranty services and may last longer, but for the majority they are bad news, no matter the brand. Another exception would be laptops featuring SSDs which is the most sensible option when it comes to performance. My advice. Unless you absolutely need mobile computing for studies or work purpose, get a desktop. If space is an issue, nowadays mini ITX computers are very affordable, even surpassing mini laptops in performance for the same price if you built it yourself. Let's face it, most people nowadays have smartphones which are making mobile laptops redundant for most general browsing, media and even gaming. Enough ranting, remember to remove the DVD drive if any and also the RAM sticks and the hard disk drive. That should be the last of the screws. You can use a plastic spudger or guitar pick like gadget or your fingernails if you like breaking them. Pry open the bottom frame. Be gentle and work from one side to the other. This is where many people will break some plastic tabs or even part of the bezel or the frame. If you feel resistance when pulling, go back and check for some screws that you may have left. Top points for Sony here for this laptop design as one back cover removed gives access to the whole of the components. This makes my job easier unlike on some other laptop designs. Here is the CPU fan, the RAM slots, DVD drive and the hard disk drive location. This is the CPU cooler under which lies the CPU and that's the GPU. We have together 8 screws to remove starting with the CPU cover bracket screws 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6 holding the cooler for the GPU and 7, 8 for the fan so we can lift the whole cooler off, dust clean the fan and reapply new thermal paste on both the GPU and the CPU. Unplug the CPU fan plug and unscrew all the 8 screws holding the fan and the cooler. Now be careful when lifting up the cooler as sometimes the thermal paste would have glued between the CPU and the cooler making it hard to separate the top cooler from the GPU. In this case there is an unlocking mechanism for the CPU socket which means I am able to carefully lift the cooler and CPU glued to it together. 
Now this is dodgy as I can easily bend a CPU pin in the process or drop the whole thing and again bend the CPU pin. I would advise you to try prying the cooler off slowly by inserting a small flat screwdriver between the CPU and the cooler instead. Lots of care, you'll see in a minute. Return the CPU back into the socket aligning the golden triangle of the CPU to the triangle on the socket and lock it. Use a non-sharp flat spudger type gadget to take off as much stubborn dried thermal paste from both the CPU and GPU. Avoid metallic objects such as a screwdriver as it may damage the chips. Use some alcoholic wipes to clean off the rest of the thermal paste until completely clean. You can use a can of compressed air to dust clean the fan. Use the spudger or a screwdriver here but carefully as these are not the chips but the cooler and alcohol wipes to clean the CPU and GPU coolers of the dried hard thermal paste. Apply a pea-sized amount of thermal paste onto the CPU and GPU. Return the cooler back aligning all the holes and screw all the 8 screws back. Remember to also plug in the CPU fan plug. Time to insert back the RAM sticks and the hot disk drive to test the laptop before putting everything back together. So there you go, laptop booted up fine and we can log in ok. I can already hear the fan being much quieter. Now it's just a question of working backwards to replace every screw in reverse order. This is where the marked sheet of paper comes in handy. You may want to use the laptop a little longer to check if everything is in working order before final reassembly. Some final thoughts. If you absolutely need to get a laptop, my advice would be to buy one which can be easily accessed with minimal removal of the back cover. Also try to buy a customized laptop such as on pcspecialist.co.uk, link down below, where you can be more in control of what components go into your laptop. Avoid the lower end laptops, avoid buying used as much as possible and always buy from reputable sellers with excellent return warranty. When using your laptop always make sure you're not blocking the air vents, try to use on a cool hard surface. Always back up your important personal data in three different places as much as possible. I would advise one last turning on of the laptop before screwing everything back together just to be sure. The other reason this laptop was restarting could be due to the recent Windows 10 upgrade which has been receiving so much flack since its release and I wouldn't necessarily disagree with the haters. On that note I will be releasing an upcoming tutorial on how to successfully freely upgrade a Windows 7 32-bit to a Windows 10 64-bit with a questionable genuine activated Windows 7 product key. If you want to see that then smash that like button or if you have any specific request then drop me a line in the comment section below. I do try to respond to all the comments. Remember to subscribe and share this vid. This was Ash from Heal My PC. Until next time, peace out.